Hi everybody, I hope you're doing well today. We'll have two books, one about counting and one about shapes. You be the judge of whether or not the books are fiction or nonfiction. The first one is called Counting in the City. Oh, I bet you already know if it's fiction or nonfiction. It's by Tracy Stafora. She's the author and look what it has. Yep, that's right, a table of contents. It tells us where the information are, is and what page. All right, here. Yes, it is nonfiction. Good for you. In the city. Numbers are everywhere in the city. Numbers help us count. That's right. So that's the city. Maybe that's a theater. And this is an... Elevator. That's right. We need numbers in the elevator to tell us what floor we want to go to. Here are 10 birds. Here are nine boats. Nice job. Here are eight cranes. Here are seven dogs. I hear you counting. Nice job. Here are six bells. Here are five bins. That's right, there are so many things in the city to count. Here are four windows. Here are three buses. What is another vehicle that we see in the city? That's right, a taxi. Here are two fans. Here is one river. We did learn about the Chicago River in our C is for Chicago book. Nice connection. There are zero cars on this bridge. There are many people on the sidewalk. That's right, there's lots of bridges in the city. Things in groups. Some things come in groups. Bicycle wheels come in twos. That's right, those are circles. I love that you're making connections. Traffic lights come in threes. Fingers come in fives. That's right, one hand has five fingers. What can you count in the city? That's right, you could count the skyscrapers. Great work. All right, our next book is Shapes in the Kitchen. That's right, that's the one we looked at in our meeting. And you're right, it's nonfiction. Shapes in the Kitchen by Tracy Stafora. She's the same author as counting in the city. And you're right. I heard someone say a table of contents. Shapes around us. Shapes are everywhere. There are many shapes in the kitchen. Go find some shapes in your kitchen today. Squares. A square has four sides. A square has four corners. This tile is a square. That's right. The sides are all the same size. Nice job. This cheese is a square. This window is a square. And next week we'll learn that technically a cheese that looks like that one is not really a square. It's a cube because it's three-dimensional. But we'll talk more about that next week. Circles. A circle is a round shape. It has no corners. The drain is a circle. Oh, I'm so glad you're excited about learning about cubes. Mm -hmm. We're going to learn about three-dimensional shapes. This apple is a circle. This plate is a circle. You're right. The apple is actually a sphere. Nice thinking. Rectangles. A rectangle has four sides, just like a square. And a rectangle has four corners, just like a square. But the sides are not the same size. A rectangle has two short sides and two long sides. That cabinet door is a rectangle. Nice listening. 
This sponge is a rectangle. This cutting board is a rectangle. You're right. The sponge is not flat. It is not two-dimensional. It's three-dimensional. What is it called? Yeah, if you were in my class last year, you remember that that would be a rectangular prism because it's not flat. It's big. Nice work. Triangles. A triangle has three sides. A triangle has three corners. This sandwich is a triangle. That's right. This napkin is a triangle. This samosa is a triangle. There is a three-dimensional name for a triangle. Do you want to hear it now or wait until next week? It's called a tetrahedron. Yes, it's a math word. Good for you. Shapes in the kitchen. How many shapes can you see? So since you got a little preview of what we're going to learn about next week, go in your kitchen, check out all the two-dimensional and three-dimensional shapes. And since there's no school for two days, go to a city and see if you can find anything to count. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you soon.